Hey, hey, this is Chucky with Chucky Media. Oh, shoot, it's over here. <laughs> when I see myself, I, uh, I'm seeing it, not mirror image. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and just say that it's uh, been fun, man. I, I, I'm really enjoying the live streaming. I'm enjoying figuring out this technology. And it's, you know, a little bit of expensive hobby. But you know what? It's not really even a hobby anymore because we've been paid a decent amount of money to do live streaming. And essentially everything I've made in live streaming I've put into some equipment, which I think that's what a lot of people in this industry do. And then you just kind of keep building. And as long as you can afford to do that, eventually you get to the point where you have all the equipment you need and then you're just making decent money doing this. So what I've invested in is what I research to be the best live stream type camera. And I'm recording this the way I would actually be doing a live stream. So the Sony A6400, this is the camera, I mean, people said you can do the A5100, and then the newer version was the A6100. That would get you by. But by going up to the A6400, I got some additional features, which to me, I want a camera that's versatile and not just doing good live streaming and 4K video. But I also wanted a camera that I could do good still photography. And I still wanted to be affordable. I, I, I just couldn't see myself spending over $1,000 for a body. So the A6600, great camera. It's got a bigger battery and things like that. This one I'm running on a dummy battery, which if you're doing a lot of live streaming, a lot of times you're kind of set up in one spot. So that's all I need. And I don't know, there's a few other, they had eye tracking with the A6600. This has face tracking. So literally it's tracking my face and it's keeping me in focus. But I have a badass lens on this and as people in the camera world know and even in the film world, it's all about your lens. And so these, I've got two lenses prime lenses so that means it can't zoom they're fixed focal length which tells me what my I guess level of in uh, wideness or telephoto ness I don't know the proper terms for that but this one's a 16 millimeter and it's a 1.4 f-stop, which not to get into all the detail, you can research it yourself, but 1.4 is a really nice f-stop. means I have a really big aperture. And that means it can take in a lot of light so I can slow my speed down, I can slow my ISO down. And this thing is, by the way, when I'm in video mode or movie mode it it does all this adjusting on its own so I just watch my s-stop go up and come back down when I'm doing photography I'm usually in manual I want to control my f-stop I want to control my speed I want to control my ISO and those are the three things the triangle as they call it that you're always trying to um, get the proper ratio depending on what you're shooting and the beauty of this, what gives it such a great, you see that crisp look, but then everything else is out of focus and you can see me real clear and crisp. That's the quality of the lens and that's the size of the f-stop. That f-stop gives me a really shallow depth of field. I literally, I mean, you can start seeing, you know, things come out of focus maybe five inches in front of me and go out of focus maybe five inches behind me. And so... That's your depth of field. And so that is what stays in focus. And the lower the f-stop, the, the shallower the depth of field, which then makes it so that it gets that cool effect, which 
is kind of the way our eyes naturally see things. I think that's one of the reasons why it looks so good to us is if I was actually with my naked eye looking at my fist here, I do. Everything else goes out of focus. And so this camera is capturing that. It's not flat. When everything's in focus, everything kind of becomes flat. It's not the way we would naturally see it. So the more we can replicate the way our eyes actually th see things, that level of clarity, resolution, depth of field, all of a sudden it's like it looks really, really cool to us. It looks beautiful, you know. I mean, I'm looking at the image on my laptop since I'm streaming it and capturing it on my laptop. And I was like, man, this just looks beautiful. Plus, I have a little monitor on the camera itself. And this is one of the things about the A6400 is, and I, I'm sure most of them now, but I can flip the monitor on the camera up above the camera and I can see all the settings and everything and I put a microphone on here so I got a little Rode shotgun mic on here and the other thing I did was put that on a little shoe <laughs> cold shoe I guess they call it and it's off to the side of the camera but it's on a little rubber shock mount so it hopefully doesn't pick up too much of the vibrations it's not a real expensive microphone so it's not going to be the high quality but still I tested it and it's a lot better quality to be using this little shotgun mic than to be recording the audio off of the actual microphone that's on the camera itself and this camera actually has the ability to record in stereo. So I, I guess if I had a stereo mic set up, I could do right, left, or I don't know. I don't know exactly how that works. Look, it says two channels, but it only has one input. In fact, <clears throat> my partner in all this, Johnny Medina, he just bought a really nice video camera, a Black Magic, and it does have two input so you can fully record two different microphones and be full stereo or just two totally different sources like the way he has a cool little setup right now is he's got one shotgun mic looking forward and one mic right there so the operator could talk and ask questions to the subject and both are on the two different channels and he's capturing uh, clean audio for both of those. Anyway, all right. Have a good evening.